We will describe several CDR topologies and jet tower requirements in a survey system. However, the jitter tracking or tolerance requires a good phase detector to sense the phase error and make a correction. In this video, we are going to further dive into the CDR and show the image of why we need a Hodge a linear phase detector in a CDR. There are two types of phase detectors, which is a nonlinear phase detector and a linear phase detector PD. The Alexander or called band band phase detector is a nonlinear PD. Since it only produces an error or correction signal that corresponds to the sign of the instantaneous phase error between the two inputs. On the other hand, the Hodge phase detector is a linear PD since it produces an error or correction signal that is proportional to the instantaneous phase error between the two inputs. The Hodge PD's I-O transfer function of the output voltage versus the input phase error is linear. Let's talk about each PD in detail and you will have the image of why you need a linear phase detector. Let's start with the nonlinear PD with a simple transfer curve. The input phase error at the PD's input would be the clock phase minus the data phase. The output error signal would be the late signal minus the early signal, which implies that the clock phase is later or earlier than the data phase. For example, if the clock phase is later than the data phase, the phase error will be positive or greater than zero, and then the upper error of correction signal will be positive to drive the clock to run faster and vice versa. In addition, since the phase difference will wrap every bit over one UI, therefore, the transfer curve we are interested in while both frequencies of the clock and data are the same, and the capture range in the phase error is within plus minus one UI. Then, the binary or bang bang characteristic of the nonlinear PD was proposed by Alexander in 1975, which is a nonlinear PD since it only produced an error or correction signal that corresponds to the sign of the instantaneous phase error between the two inputs. Do you see any issue with having the nonlinear PD characteristic? Think about the design images for 5 seconds. Correct, the CDR design would be very challenging. In a CDR loop, we know the loop filters transfer function for the RC passive element, which is near and could be specified in H of S. Easy. In addition, the VCO's output phase is the time integral of output frequency. Therefore, its transfer function is KVCO divided by S. If we can specify the PD transfer function, we can specify the whole CDR loop and help the whole CDR loop dynamic design in detail. For example, we need to understand or verify a few CDR dynamic performance, such as CDR's bandwidth, jitter generation, jitter tolerance, jitter transfer, and acquisition time to make sure the service can meet the transfer target BLA. If the modeling of the nonlinear PD is missing, that will be an issue for CDR modeling in a design. What else could be the performance issue of the nonlinear PD? Think about the granularity image in the last day for 5 seconds. Bingo! The excessive jitter in the last day could be a concern. As you can see, the band band output would only have two steps. Therefore, in the last day, the phase would ideally toggle between plus 
and minor step size, which is so called the hunting jitter. Therefore, if the output jitter is little, ideally, the output clock jitter will be limited by the PD step size. The question is how to choose the step size during either design or real time operation. Another observation of the Ben Ben CDS settling dynamic behavior is much faster but could have a through rate limit concern. At the end of the day, this loop dynamic parameter of the nonlinear PD CDR would be very challenging. For example, there is no linear model to analyze the optimal step size easily according to the CDR's dynamic requirements. So, what can we do? Think about the modeling image for 5 seconds. Bingo! If we cannot model the nonlinear PD, why don't we just use the linear phase detector in a CDR loop? Obviously, 10 years later of Alexander's nonlinear PD, Hodge proposed a kind of linear PD whose linear transfer function shows the average output voltage is proportional to the input phase error. Again, the input phase error and the PD's input will be the clock phase minus the data phase, and the capture range of the phase error is plus minus pi. If the phase error is within 0 and plus pi, the positive delta phi would imply the clock phase is later than the data phase. So the average output voltage should be positive to push the VCO to run faster. Then, the correction signal moves the clock phase earlier and the phase error smaller toward to the zero phase error direction. Similarly, if the clock phase is earlier than the data phase, the phase error will be negative. Then, the correction signal moves the clock or VCO phase later and the phase error will be smaller toward zero phase error direction as well. Lastly, the PD scan would be simply delta V divided by delta phi, which is 2 over 2 pi and 1 over pi. Pretty linear, right? So the whole CDR model can be developed easily in a system design, in addition to the characteristic and modeling of the linear PD benefit. Do you see any other benefit in having the linear PD? Think about the settling images for 5 seconds. Correct. The most advantage of the linear PD is no phase error while the linear PD CDR lags, which the transfer function shows zero average output voltage if delta phi equals zero. In other words, the linear PD is quiet while the Ben Ben PD keeps toggling while the phase error is little. The ideal zero phase error will provide a linear CDR with the best timing margin for very low PL rate requirements. Another takeaway is the linear CDR initially check out phase error with an exponential transition response, which is expected since the phase error is big with a big correction initially, and the phase error is smaller with a smaller follow-up correction voltage later. Lastly, we mostly care about the phase error between the input data and op clock, since we need to have the best timing margin for the recovery data at the high speed front end. Therefore, if the input jitter is little, the op clock jitter will be little and vice versa, since the output clock should track the input data ideally. Here are the summarized image of why you need a Hodge, a linear phase detector in a CDR. The nonlinear PD only produces an error or correction signal that corresponds to the sign of the instantaneous phase error between the two inputs. Therefore, we cannot model or verify a few CDR dynamic performance such as CDR's bandwidth, jitter generation, 
jitter chance, jitter transfer, and acquisition time to make sure the service can meet the target bit array easily. Even though the Ben Ben CDR settling dynamic behavior is very fast, its steady state phase error will be limited by its Ben Ben step size and the limit cycles. That was the main reason people were thinking a linear PD CDR such that we can model and design the CDR easily. Another advantage of a linear CDR is the small phase error in the steady state, since its output correction amount is proportional to the phase error. If the phase error is small, the correction or phase adjustment will be little. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback. And please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.